Hello Donuts, today we are going to be reacting to Lil Britain USA. I've never seen this, but apparently this show was even more mental than the one they did in the UK. So let's get into it. Gave it to her. I gave it to her real good. She couldn't walk when I was done with her. She the one in the wheelchair. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, did you see how big he was there? He probably like, you know, if he's doing it, does he pick up the wheelchair as well? He might as well just the 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 woman in one hand, the 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 wheelchair in the other one, just kind of bicep curl him with the wheelchair. Wow, God, I want to look like that one day. How do some men have that? Like, it makes me not even look like a man. Some men have like muscles here. How do you have muscles here? How do you even build that muscle? It's like a speed bump. That looks like the male monkey over there. That smaller, fat, ugly one must be the female monkey. <laughs> so... Sitting at opposite ends. Couldn't be further apart from each other. You know, one of my favourite things is, have you ever been to, like, an older couple's house? Maybe it's your mum or your, like, grandparents, friends, you know, and they've been together a while, and you can tell they kind of resent each other, but they've been together that long, like, they might, like, who else are they going to be with? They're just, they're kind of stuck now. And it's all the passive-aggressive kind of comments. They're so funny. wonder if I'm going to be like that one day. Just like, yeah? He's sitting down, as usual. Right? Never does anything. Now they're trapped in a cage. My god, the sexual chemistry is off the together charts. in misery. I really am now, just waiting for you to die. <laughs> I'm sorry, right? But, like, you know if you get uh, that age and you're waiting for the other person to die, you just get their life insurance and then just give them a full English breakfast and then just put some, like, I don't know, some... I don't know, just, you know, just... Inside the sausage, just slip, slip them dodgy pills, and they just get them out early. I think I'm quite toxic. Yeah, that's not, that's not, that's not, uh, that's not, that's not great for me, actually. Oh, isn't it amazing? <laughs> and our kids are all grown up now. Well, they both went to college, didn't they? That's right. One at Harvard, one at Yale. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> Every whenever you watch something from America. Everybody goes to Yale. Like, I always hear that, What? like, it's one of the... Uh, Harvard and Yale are the only universities I know from America. How many people are going to Yale? How have they got that much space? Where the f*** even is Yale? Have I met you before? I, uh, don't think so. I'm sure I have. Your face is very familiar. I don't know. I've definitely seen you someplace before. I really don't think so. Darling, I don't think you know the man. Uh, I never forget a face. Come on. Where do I know you from? I do a lot of hardcore gay porn movies. Oh my god, you shouldn't have pressed. You shouldn't have pressed. Your wife of 35 years is there. My friend. Also, did you have to say hardcore, right? Can you not just be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just on a gay porn, right? I just do gay porn in my spare time. Hardcore? Like, what does that even mean? Is that like no minimap? <laughs> it's a Call of Duty. Joke, guys, honestly, I'm so sad. You could ask one of the doctors if he could possibly, you know, fit me in at some point. I could, but <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a complaint. Do you have any complaint forms? I've run out. I've said this before. I think it might have been in the, in the previous Little Britain video we did. Receptionists, some of you are like this. There'll be some nice receptionists watching. I think. I think you exist. But normally, like. It's like whenever you go up to the reception desk of like a dentist, for, for instance, I remember going to the dentist and it's as if you've just like shot their entire family. You're trying to give them money and they're like, they're like looking you up and down and that. I remember being in my school uniform getting looked up and down. Ah, oh, you'd like to cancel your x-ray, Dr. Oh. Chang at five. Thanks for letting us know. You're in luck. Yes. I found the complaint form. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that that strap that that woman had on her head there. I remember having uh, one of them because I've got asthma. I remember having one of them on my nose in school, and that I think that was where the bullying started in school. I remember everyone like started uh, taking the mic that I couldn't breathe, which wasn't too nice, you know. Kids are evil. What the market research tells us is that customers were uncomfortable with the name Anosol. People with hemorrhoids were embarrassed to ask for it, and they didn't like having it on the shelf at home. This is hilarious. Like, can you actually imagine this actually happens in real life? You know, companies that do products for your anus. There's just like, what is this? Just ten men in suits around a table, like, yeah, yeah. I, I think this, the packaging of this will really attract people to get rid of the piles. Right? They, yeah, I think, I think the hemorrhoid users are gonna eat this one up. So I've been working with our marketing division here at MBST to come up with some alternatives. 
Yes, Ivan. We felt this was a little softer than Anasol. Sorry, that's an egg. You know, when you're leaving the house, you're like, uh, have I got me, have I got me keys? Yeah, I've got me phone. Right, okay, yeah, I've got chewing gum. I've got me ass ointment, just in case, uh, me arsehole falls out when I'm walking down the street. Imagine if your boyfriend's arse falls out, like, uh, Imagine if you, imagine if you, <laughs> you know, I, I tried that joke like four times and then I, re I realised the first time it wasn't that funny, but for some reason I was trying to make it work. Why was I trying to make arse ointment happen so bad? Tush juice had an excellent <laughs> approval rating, as did sore asshole relief. Oh, that one looks spicy. Do you know what I mean? That one looks spicy. That one looks like you just, you might as well just rub a madras on your, on your ring. That's terrific. Americans like to holiday in their own country, which suits the rest of the world just fine. <laughs> you do. That is mad that Americans do that. Like, I know you do that in Britain. Like, you'll go to, you know, Cornwall or, like, Centre Parks or wherever you go on holiday in Britain. But, like, Americans never leave. Like, Americans, when they go on holiday, they don't go to Benidorm. And that kind of blows my mind. Like, what do you, what, what do you mean you go on holiday in the same country all the time? Like, you just go to Florida. Like, that's mad. Like, America just has everything. Like, where, where do we have in this country that's, like, a nice place to go to? Like, Centre Parks, it's, like, so expensive. Anyone ever been to Centre Parks? You've got to sell your body just to get there. Trust us, I've done it a couple of times, guys. Just for those log fumes. Sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes when I'm sitting on the log flume, I'm like, oh, God. Wasn't worth the pain in the ass. Need some ass ointment to help this. On Tuesday evening... After a late night session in the Senate, I was driving home when I discovered that I needed to use the restroom. So I drove to a nearby airport. On arrival at the restroom, I met a young Puerto Rican gentleman. He invited me into his cubicle to talk about Republican Party policy. No, not believing it. Guys, I've learned firsthand if somebody if somebody invites you into their cubicle to talk about Republicans, say no. You will never come back from that. You will come out of that cubicle a changed person. It changes the entire trajectory of your life. Also, isn't this basically, like, kind of what Man Matt Hancock did? Didn't he, like, didn't he, like, I'm trying to remember, didn't he cheat on his wife? But now he's, like, a celebrity and, like, do people like him now? Wasn't he on I'm a Celebrity? How did that happen? How did people just let Matt Hancock be a celebrity? As I made my way into the cubicle, I slipped upon the wet floor, and in the confusion, pulled down the young man's pants and breathes. Guys, we've all done it. One day just slipped, and then you just pull the pants down, and you're like, ah! God, you're staring at him. I'm not gonna proceed with that. At that point, my clothes accidentally fell off. The young man, Raoul, then realized he had lost a contact lens. He then bent over to find it. I'm gonna just put this out there. Who wrote this statement? Because you don't need to be this specific. Just do the politician's thing. Like, I don't know. I slipped. His willy was in me mouth. Okay, everyone will be like, yeah, we've all done that. Not me, but, you know, people people might relate to you. Just quickly, guys, before I proceed with the video, if you haven't already, make sure you press subscribe because we're chasing down 100,000 subscribers. If you want to be a part of the Before 100,000 Subscriber Club, click the button. Let's get on with the video. Where there are now huge oh numbers God, of obese people scared. or greedy fat slobs. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to try something a little bit different. I think that this is the best character they do. Is it Matt Lucas? Yeah, I think this, this is the one he plays the best because I feel like there's some truth to it in terms of not what she says, but in terms of how she actually thinks. Like, I think the people that run weight watch us think are actually really judgy. Like, I know, like, people who've been to them things in my family and they say, like, it's... Sometimes it can be a weird atmosphere, not with the actual people who are there to better themselves, just with the person who's running it. Can we have a volunteer, please, to come up here and tell us all why they're so revoltingly fat? <laughs> yes, Tony, you had your hand up if you'd like to come and join us up here. <laughs> It's that face. I hate that face. It, 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 it enrages us. I know they're acting, but you know that face. You know that face that people do. You know what your face? They're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then behind your back, they're like, they're a bloody bastard. You are one of the very most fattiest people here. In fact, I often struggle to fit all of you in my field of vision. <laughs> Tony, 
when did that, that's outrageous what do you mean are you trying to say that the left side of his body's got a different postcode to the right what do you mean you can't fit them all in vision love they called him fatty not fatty bum bum no they didn't go ooh fatty bum bum fatty fatty bum bum no no just fatty <laughs> That's so good. No, just fatty, just fatty. E, honestly, e. I think I've said this before, but it's like, e, have you ever watched any morning breakfast presenters show where there's like two people and when one of them speak and the other one's like, yeah, yeah, I'm e. e. Why are you doing that? It makes everyone just feel uncomfortable. Jab of the hut? No. No. Tab of shit? <laughs> yes. One. Baba the elephant? Don't keep going. <laughs> Why you keep going? This is just making him feel worse. Uh, leave Tony alone. Do it again? Leave Tony alone. Do it again? Do leave it Tony again. alone. Stop. Ah! Stop, love. Love, stop. Once is quite enough. Twice, okay. Three times, that's where... It's like the, the British thing, okay? I know this is Little Britain, USA, but in Britain, the, the, the unspoken rule is if you don't hear what someone says, you go, sorry, what? And then they say it and you go... So, sorry, what? And then whatever they say, you just have to say whatever you heard. Don't ask like 10 times. That's making the insides of my stomach fight each other. Oh. Well, that could be the cheese I had earlier. Yeah, it's kind of, I'm kind of feeling it right now. Quite so slim yourself. Yeah. Go on, then. Diggy? She's just a bully. Yeah. Where'd they call you at school? They call me Marjorie, actually. Oh, beautiful Marjorie. Oh, Princess Gorgeous. I doubt you got called Princess Gorgeous. Not by the way you look, just I've never heard anyone in school get called Princess Gorgeous. Imagine that. Everyone would be talking rubbish about them. The teachers call her Princess Gorgeous? Who she thinks she is? Though it was started in Britain by Lord Baden Powell, who was keen to justify his hobby of sharing a tent with young boys in uniform. <laughs> so one day, you can all tell your grandkids that you met Bing Gordon, the eighth man on the moon. Thank you, Bing. I'm sure we will. Imagine being the eighth man on the moon. Like, that's not actually that's Like, why are we still counting? That's not that special. We're like the first man on the moon. The second. The third, you're kind of pushing it. By the eighth person, you might as well just say you're going to the shops. Like, oh, I'm just popping to the shops. Like, oh, I'm just popping on the moon. Like, the eighth isn't special anymore. I'm sorry. I'm also the only man with a mustache to have been to the moon. So, in a way, I can say I'm the first man on the moon who had a mustache. Oh, my God. That means nothing. Oh yeah, I'm the only one with a mustache on the moon. <laughs> like, what well, are we just are we just like mentioning anything to make us feel special now? Because I imagine like astronauts probably do this. They try and find like, oh yeah, well, you know, I was the first person on the moon with a club card. <laughs> you know, just getting some extra moon points, you know, for me grocery shop. Right? I don't care if you took your Morrison's more card to the moon. Doesn't make any more special. You're still number eight. Have you been to any other planets? <laughs> first up. The moon is not a planet. That's why it's called the moon. It's a moon. The moon. Second, no one has been to any other planet. So it's not like I'm not the first guy not to do that, okay? Third. Oh my God, can you imagine being the first person on like, on like Saturn? Oh, I bet the first person that walks on Saturn will be hot with the f***ing ring. Just like gliding on the ring. Oh, I want to be the first person to walk on Saturn. Imagine putting that in your Instagram bio. First, by the way, not first person with the club card, just first. I went there! I don't know why, it's real boring. There's no TV, no stores, no restaurants. You can't even get a decent cup of coffee. There's shit all there, but I went to the moon. Thank you very Do you much, Bingo. There's eight people like, that have been to the moon. Obviously, somebody like set up a shop there, like a Londis. Surely there's got to be like a Londis on the moon, right? Selling, I don't know, like moon meat or whatever they're, whatever they're selling, like. Londis on the moon like surely people are like setting up shops there now eight people have been there we need to start like you know creating some sort of civilization there i might be the first person to set foot on the moon that opens a Londis. anyway if you would like to see me react to some more little britain clips click right here or watch my brand new movie reaction on the cam kirkham channel right here cam kirkham baby <laughs>